Australian height had him came to fruition in 1971, but what is AHD and how did it come about? The next five minutes will answer this question and many more. Picture yourself in 1950 and imagine you have been tasked with the job of building a road from Adelaide to Melbourne. To cut costs, you decide to start from either end and meet at the border. The reduced level at the border is meant to be 18.5 metres. But what is 18.5 metres related to? How do you know the road will meet at the correct height? As Australia became more modernised, the local datums that had been established around the nation started to create issues. The inability to be able to compare height across Australia was hindering its modernisation and a need for an Australian-wide height datum was required. In 1945, the National Mapping Council was formed. The council consisted of the Director of National Mapping from the Department of National Development, who was the Chairman, the Commonwealth Surveyor General from the Department of Interior, the Surveyor Generals from each of the states, the Hydrographer from the Royal Australian Navy, and the Director of Military from the Army. One of their main visions was to create a national height datum based on mean sea level. The formation of the Council marked the beginning of a height-connected Australia. Between 1945 and 1950, the Department of Interior completed 4,800 kilometres of one-way levelling. They used third-order tolerances and it was conducted in three states. Between 1956 and 1960, the total amount of levelling increased to 16,000 kilometres. In the next five years, the National Levelling Survey really progressed. In 1961, the Federal Government made special funds available for the exploration of oil in Australia. Some of these funds were directed towards the connection of level surveys between sedimentary basins. The Division of National Mapping, previously known as the National Mapping Council, and the Department of Interior were financed through the special funds made available by the Federal Government. The Director of National Mapping decided, due to time constraints, that contract surveyors would be used and level surveys would be completed to third order standard. The State Surveyor General staff supervised the contract surveyors and the National Mapping Council planned and organised the logistics of the remaining levelling. By 1965, 129,000 kilometres of levelling had been completed. Have we talked about mean sea level yet? No, we haven't, and we'll do that now. Between 1966 and 1968, tide levels were recorded at 30 different tide gauges across Australia, with measurements taken every hour. The time span of the data varies from two years to only one, however most fall within the same two year window. A number of exceptions do exist, such as Karumba, which was recorded between 1957 and 1960. Calibration of the tide gauge equipment was undertaken at 26 sites across the coast ensuring that the automatic recorders were in agreement with the manual recordings. The data was then sent to the Horace Lamb Centre at Flinders University, where the sea levels and tide constants were identified. The resultant mean sea level was set at the zero benchmark for the entire height datum. After 1970, 161,000 kilometres of levelling was completed with the network being split up into five separate regions. Each region had its own fixed origin. These were the Johnson Geodetic Station, located in the centre of the country for South Australia and Northern Territory, Fremantle for Western Australia, Brisbane for Queensland, Sydney for New South Wales, and Point Lonsdale for Victoria. The adjustments were then applied to the data using programs. The first adjustment was the Ortho 1 program, computing the orthometric correction for each junction. The Level 1 program was then applied, fixing the height of the origin in each region while adjusting all junction points simultaneously. The last adjustment was a Level 2 program, which fixed the tide gauge locations to the mean sea level while all junctions were adjusted. Additional junction points were added to the network using the Line Edge program, interpolating the adjustment between existing junction points. On the 29th meeting in Canberra, the National Mapping Council formally adopted the National Levelling Survey as the Australian Height Datum 1971, and consequently was the datum which all vertical control for mapping was referred. The estimated standard error of adjustment heights in the Johnson Geodetic Centre of Australia relative to sea level is only 33 centimetres. It was determined at the time that this was sufficient for all practical purposes. 
When the adjustment was completed, 42,000 permanent benchmarks with AHD heights were spread across the nation. One of the most commendable levelling surveys conducted was by South Australian contract surveyor John Gibson. He completed the final levelling contract between Paderka and Birdsville. John and his team, John Rulford, Ron Burge and Larry Yates, topped 1,101 sand dunes and completed 500 kilometres of two-way levelling. The plaque that commemorates that major feat is located outside the Birdsville Hotel.